In today's video, the POV wand. We got a PCB, often designed it, and it's really, really cool. I'm gonna cover it in details. All the parts are on the table. Gonna solder, then gonna cover the code, how to create new fonts, how POV works in general. So stick around. My first step will be to solder the 16 resistors into their place. Now, originally it was planned for 220 ohm. I didn't have enough. So those are 270 ohm, but they will do. Resistors in place. Next step, 16 LEDs. 16 LEDs in place. Next up, switch a momentary button. Switch a momentary button are in place. Next step, the socket for the nano. Socket in place. And the last thing, the nano goes like this. And last and not least, the power cable for the 9 volt. We originally planned it to have a proper battery case here, but uh, they never arrived with the corona and everything, just never arrived, we ordered twice. So this will do, everything is soldered. One of the cool feature of the POV stick is that Offer made the um, unused pins available here on those output and you got a perfect board here. And as I mentioned, we were planning to put a socket, a proper 9 volt uh, case in here. And since we don't have, and this is metal, I put some tape here so I won't be shorting. Now I uploaded the code, a simple code that will just light up all the LEDs to make sure they're all working. And as you can see, all of them are working. So my next step will be to go to the computer and go over the code and how it works and so on. So let's move to the computer. POV or persistence of vision. It's kind of like a bug or a feature that we have in our perception of light and images. We'll see the light way past the time it's actually hit our eyes and got to our brain, giving us the option to seeing a flowing image. It's kind of like the same as having a long exposure in a camera. The POV one takes advantage of that little bug that we have and draws each column, each column of a font one after the other. And since we have that bug in our eyes, we actually perceive it as one image. And of course, you have to move the stick a little bit to spread the light over. It's basically, we're just drawing the columns over in the air. Now, let's go see how the code is actually doing it. Before I go on, I just want to give credit when credit is due. We based our project on this excellent instruction book. So, and I'm going to leave a link for that in the description. So now let's go back to the code. The art of this code is the font structure. Remember that I showed you before that there's like columns for each of the fonts? So basically this is the representations of it. Each byte here, except for the first one, which I'll go over in a second, represents the columns. Each two bytes represents one column because we have 16 LEDs and each byte gives us eight um, positions. And this is the structure. This is one for a space, which as you can see, it's all zeros. But if you look, this is a question mark and you can see, you, you can see the structure. You have like a line here and a line here. It's basically just one line, long line and all the rest of the columns will just be empty. And you get all the rest of the, of the characters all done in this way. I, I'll cover in a second, but there is a really easy way to get this structure out of the software. Um, now I mentioned in the previous, video that we actually alternate this structure and got an Hebrew font as well. So what we did, and you can see the hole over here, is that we replaced all the lowercase with the Hebrew. We didn't write the letters because it's really hard to write them. You can write it in an Arduino. But this is the A, this is the alphabet of the Hebrew alphabet and the way it's structured. And I'm going to show you how it's used. A few important notes. We got an LED array, which is all the pins we use, 14, 15, 16, 17, of course it's A0 through A4. We got graphics, which is the same as the font, so each of two bytes here will create one column, and we got 64 of them all the way to here, as you can see, it's a very long string. So it's the same as the font, just written in a different array. Now you can see all sort of setting up, setting this, what, what the text is going to be, putting it into another array, and we got start time, elapsed time, and so on. There's a lot of characters here. What's really interesting is how it's actually done. So let's go to that part. What we're doing is we go over the font, 
and we read the message and the text selection of the write down with the font type. So we're getting the that bytes that we need. And then if we get a Hebrew font, we just type it with the Hebrew font. We, we do print letter large with the buffer K and my font Hebrew. Now, if it's an English font, we're doing it with uh, with my font. So we just basically use, we have here, we got my font and we got my font Hebrew. So we're basically, this is the way I've done it. It was the easiest way to do that. Um, let's go and take a look at print letter large. So what happened here, we're getting whatever character we need to, to print out. Um, we have the font that we need. And now it says if, if it's under 32 or over 126, which is the sets of characters we have, we set it to 32, which is a space, of course. Um, then what we do is we read through all that line in the font, and we're basically setting B and B2, which is the third by the first byte and the second byte. As I told you, the lines comes, the columns comes in two bytes. We're getting them from the data, and then we do putting them in set ports. So now let's go to set ports for a second. And what set ports does is taking that data and breaking it into the respective ports. If you want to know more about ports, I put the link in the description and, and on the screen for a really good tutorial I got on that. And that's the magic. We're basically doing it. And then we, we delay microseconds of T um, T column delay. The T column delay is really, 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 really short. So the time that goes between each of font, each of the columns, it's 900 microseconds. So that's less than less, less than one millisecond. And it's really goes really fast. This is again using that little bug that we have, allowing us to get a full perspective of the letter. We did the same thing with the graphics. We loop over the size of graphics, meaning this, those 64 um, uh, columns, and we print out each. You can see I'm, I'm adding two each time. So basically, I'm taking two, I'm taking the first one and then the second one, and I send them to set ports, doing the same thing as I do with the font. Now, I mentioned before that you can create your own font, so let's go over this. In the original Instructable, there was a link to this great site. Um, this project talks about how to create fonts for lead metrics from true type system fonts. As you can see, it gives really good explanation of how it's built, how the things are managed. You can see here, this is the way we talked about before. This is the columns and you can see the data here. And it suggests to use the GLCD font creator. So let me open that software. So this is a software and creating new fonts or importing new fonts couldn't be any easier. All you need to do is import an existing system font, choose whatever you like. He mentioned that choosing an 11 size font usually gets you around 16 um, in size on height, which is really important for us since we only have 16 LEDs. We cannot have a font that is um, bigger than 16 in height and then just hit OK. It asks you if to clear to the top button so it removes unneeded space. You hit OK and it's going to take it a little bit of time. Now, once it's done, exporting couldn't be any easier. You click here and you choose Micro C. And if I scroll here, you can see we got the array right here. And with the character that it represents, we can save, we can copy, we can do whatever we wish with that. Now, really important note, if you want to import something that is not English, you have to look for the characters in the higher arrays. Um, it's in Unicode and there is number for them. So just look for the font. Um, if you're looking for anything like Spanish or Arabic or any other non-English, um, font. And here it is in action. I mentioned in the previous video that it's hard to capture the text on the video, so I went with the shapes. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, or leave a comment, and see you next time.